Hello, welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us for tonight's Preservation School class on how to become a tour guide. Upcoming Preservation School classes include how to do an architectural survey on June 5th and a class about the New York City Parks Department on June 6th. In addition to Preservation School, HGC has several walking tours coming up as part of our Preservation Conference programming. Please check out our website, hdc.org, for more information and to sign up. Tonight's class will be recorded and posted on our YouTube channel for free viewing. You may also watch all our previous Preservation School classes and virtual tours on our YouTube channel. If you have any questions about programming, you can contact me at marbulu at hdc.org. I want to thank the New York City Department of Cultural Affairs, City Council, and New York State Council on the Arts for supporting Preservation School. Now I will hand it over to Anne McDermott to lead tonight's class. Thank you. Uh, hi, everybody. Um, can you hear me okay? Everything going all right there, Michelle? Yep, you sound great. Okay, great. So um, welcome, uh, happy to be here this evening. And I'm going to share with you a little bit about how I uh, became a licensed New York City tour guide. Just a little bit about my background. I have worked in IT for most of my career. And one day I was sitting at my desk and I said, you know, what I want to do when I get older, I don't know if I want to do IT. So, you know, I've always taken friends around New York City and shown them neighborhoods and different various places and pizza. Pizza's big with the tour guide thing. Um, and so then I decided, oh, let me just go down and take that test, right? So there's a test that New York City offers, and I'm going to explain that to you and give you, um, and give you a bit of an overview of the entire process and just what's available. So tonight's agenda, okay, uh, there we go, tonight's agenda. So why would you wanna become a tour guide? Um, how do you go through the process of becoming a licensed New York City tour guide? Cause it's not really, uh, it's not a straight line, but it's, it, it's, uh, it's, you have to be a New York City licensed tour guide in order to guide people around New York, or at least you should be. Um, what would you like to do tours of? Just need to think about that. What organizations offer tours? Because the best way to uh, be a tour guide is to take tours with other people and learn from them. Um, would you rather do virtual tours versus walking tours? Uh, do you want to volunteer for an organization or would you want to get paid a salary? The benefits of being a tour guide, because there are quite a few um, organizations that can help tour guides. And it's really a good, uh, good policy to be a to be a member of those organizations, I myself, and I'll explain this whole uh, thing. I'm, in, I'm a member of an organization called GANIC, the Guides Association of New York City. And that's actually where I've gotten most of my work and gotten to know most of my tour guide friends. And it's just a, a fun group of people to be part of. And then finally, we'll talk a little bit about how you market yourself, because it's one thing to be a tour guide. It's one thing to have a tour in mind. It's a whole other thing to get the customers. And that's, uh, that's the important thing. So, okay. Uh, okay, why is my PowerPoint not? Spacebar, click, okay, click is working. So why would you wanna become a New York City tour guide? Well, who knows New York better than the people who live here? And let me tell you, there's a lot of people who come from other places that want to be a New York City tour guide, but people who live here and live in the neighborhoods and know the, the people and the, the attitudes of New York are, are you know, or sought out as tour guides. Uh, it's a chance to share your specific knowledge about a particular neighborhood or an event or something you've been involved in firsthand that other people just might be interested in. And I'll, I'll show you an example of uh, a tour that I do based on my younger days of uh, being involved in rock and roll. <laughs> uh, someone who's coming to New York, someone who's uh, coming to New York is good. Some people, somebody's gonna welcome them. So why not you? Why not be involved? And it's fun. It's a, it's a fun way to spend a Sunday afternoon or a Saturday afternoon and just show people around and see the light go on in their eye. And when they taste that first bite of pizza from a place like Defara's or John's Pizza, and they go, oh, this is much better than the pizza we had back home, they'll be able to say, oh, my friend, the tour guide introduced me. And here at the bottom, I have a picture of the Wonder Wheel because it is fun being a tour guide. Okay, so how do you go through the process? 
the process is really important. So we're going to chat here for about an hour and we'll have um, questions and answers at the end. So if you have any questions as we go along, just write them down and uh, we'll address them at the end. So what is the process? Well, let me explain to you my process. So I decided I wanted to be a tour guide and I typed in how to be a New York City tour guide. <laughs> And this woman's website came up, Jesse on a Journey. I recommend that you uh, look at her website. This woman knows a lot about social media. <laughs> she's, a, she's like a social media uh, pro, uh, but she has a really interesting blog that she wrote about the whole process. She talks about going to get the test and the people and getting your picture taken and um just the ins and outs of the whole thing. She talks a little bit. She shows you examples of the questions uh, that they ask on the test. Uh, there isn't really a book per se, but I'll show you the resources that the, uh, it, the test is maintained by the Department of Consumer Affairs. And I'll show you the resources that they have uh, to be able to um, be able to become a, a tour guide. So I, I read her blog and then, hold on, admit, admit this person. <laughs> Admit, I read her blog. Okay, I'm having trouble with the screen. Okay, I, I whatever. Uh, I read her blog. And one of the things you have to do is you have to go to the Department of Consumer Affairs. Now you, you can do it online, but when I did it, you could only go in person. And this is 42 Broadway, downtown, right near the Charging Bull, one of the biggest tourist attractions in the city, the Charging Bull. And in the back of that building uh, in the lobby is the office for the Department of Consumer Affairs. And they do things like taxi licenses and a bunch of other stuff, but they, they're the ones who maintain the tour guide uh, database. Okay. Zoom. Let me just use the arrow down here. There, let's go for that. Okay, okay, so you want to be a tour guide. Well, there's a test. And the test has 150 questions. Test uh, questions that uh, are just basic New York knowledge. And I'm going to actually ask you one of the questions when we get to the end. So in order to pass, you need to get 97 right. Uh, if you get above 120, you get a star next to your name. There's a list that they publish that says that you know more than the average bear about New York City. And here we have the URL for the uh, checklist of what you would have to do to become a tour guide. Um, and uh, here's, here's the website. So I'm just gonna go through the website to kind of break it down for you uh, piece by piece. Uh, so, excuse me, is, is this multiple choice? Yes, it's multiple choice. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is multiple choice. It's not fill in the blank. Thank you. Um, okay, so you download the checklist. You see here we have a thing marked in, in English, the PDF. You download their checklist. And then here's the rest of the website. So as it says, you must be you must have a sightseeing guide license to direct people to any place or point of public interest or to describe, explain, or lecture about any place or point of uh, public interest to any person in connection with a uh, sightseeing trip or tour within the city. So basically you have to be licensed. And in order to be licensed, you have to, ha uh, you have to fill out the form and the form will include things you have to have a uh, basic, you have to fill out the application. You can either use your own photograph or they will take a photograph for you. Uh, the, the fee is $50 and that uh, $50 to take, take the test. And then um, you have to do an affirmation saying, uh, you know, things that, you know, you, you're not a criminal and you're, you know, you're a citizen of the country, I think. I, I think that that's part of it. But in any case, and a license fee. So if you want to do things on a bus or if you want to ride people around on a bus, there's an additional license that's required. Uh, you get the basic individual license. It's an online. You can do it online now. It wasn't online when, when I did it three or four years ago. Uh, and here's the link. Once you go to the URL at the top, you can just download the application, fill it out and send it in. And you have to give them these forms of uh, ID. So you have driver's license, passport, alien green card, um, 
city, state, federal employee card, municipal ID card, and again, the, the photograph. The license lasts for two years. And when you initially do it, you get it for $50. And then depending on when you renew or when you start becoming a tour guide, the fee will vary based on the month and the year that you, uh, that you renew. So it can be done in person or you can do it online. And here's uh, the link that you would click on to fill out the application online. And there are new testing centers. You used to get take the test at the facility there on, at 42 Broadway. Now they're using a testing company and that information is included in um, when you do that, when you get the application, they would show you the different testing centers you can go to. One's in, I believe there's one in Midtown and I think there might be one in Queens. So once you log in, then you get a log log in to the um, to the DCA website. You can see this is mine here to apply for a license, renew a license, et cetera. So it's pretty it's pretty straightforward actually, not very complicated. So now what about that test? What are the things they want you to know on the test? Well, um, let me give you a question here. We'll start out. I'll give you a question. We'll see. We'll test your knowledge. So. What train goes to Yankee Stadium? Check all that apply. The number four, the D, the seven, and the B. Anybody want to try to answer that? Raise your hand. I think we have some answers in the chat. In the chat. Okay. Let me look at the chat. Yes, the four goes there. Yes, Metro North goes there. Very good. Although that's not on the test. Um, that's kind of new, but also the B and the D go there. The one that doesn't go there is the number seven train. <laughs> to me, that was really obvious. I'm like the number seven train goes to Yankee to, uh, uh, city field, but it doesn't go to, uh, it doesn't go to, uh, Yankee stadium. So that's the kind of question they ask. Kind of your basic New York knowledge. Uh, okay. So, so one of the documents you can download from the DCA website here is sort of like the, uh, the prep for, for taking the test. So these are the kinds of themes of the questions they're gonna ask you. Things about getting around New York, which was one of the questions I just asked, uh, just mentioned there. Uh, general New York City knowledge, which you can get from the Blue Guide. A New York City history, you know, the Algonquin Indians. Um, New York City neighborhoods, New York City landmarks. Uh, ethnic immigration patterns, museum, art, and culture. Music, theater, and dance, that's a category. New York City literature, you know, things about O. Henry or Walt Whitman or Washington Irving or Edith Wharton or other Langston Hughes, other famous uh, New York authors. About religion, there were quite a few questions actually about churches um, and architecture and who was the architect of particular things. I did not do well on that section, I can tell you, but I did get 122, so I did get a star next to my name. Um, they ask about the parks and the parkways, you know, Greenwood and Woodlawn Cemetery, because they're very um, they're very important. Ethnic foods, of course, you know, they might ask you about John's Pizza or, you know, DeFaro's Pizza or l &B Pizza, because these are the kinds of places people want to go to. Uh, public sculptures of noted people, you know, like William Shakespeare in Central Park. Um, okay, hold on. Okay, next. Uh, residences of noted people, Walk of Fame. You know, they might ask you, you know, who lived in the Cooper Cooper Hewitt Museum before uh, before it was a museum. Well, that was Andrew Carnegie. Andrew Carnegie on that uh, on that building. Uh, legal routings, you know, the right place to, they ask, this is a, this is a really important one. Actually, they ask you things like, where can you get onto the FDR drive with a bus? Because you have to know that because if you get onto the FDR drive in the wrong spot, you're going to get stuck in one of those overhangs. So the place that you get on the FDR drive with a bus is 23rd street. Um, yeah, it's really important actually. And just working with groups. How do you work with groups? So you can download this document and the document, if you take the test and you don't pass, you can take it again within 10 days. If you fail twice, um, you have to pay the, pay the fee again in order to retake the exam. And they give you uh, like a bibliography 
of different things, books you can get that you should know. I would assume that if you're a New York person, you might even have some of these books on your website already, but they give you a list. Uh, the Blue Guide, the AIA Guide, uh, the Atlas of New York City History, Ethnic New York, New York Block by Block, a Food Lover's Guide to the Real New York, you know, the kind of things you see at the Strand or a Barnes and Noble in the New York section. And I actually bought all those books. Uh, I didn't look at them, but I took the test and I did well. So, cause I, you know, I'm a New York nerd. So here's a book that's just a general, general book, if you're interested on how to just be a tour guide. Um, the organization I'm part of is called Gannick Guys Association of New York. And they had a, a, a class on a certification class. And this book was the textbook for that class. And it's really good. It's just general. Now, this is if you want to do tour guiding in general, if, you, if you're looking to sort of expand beyond just doing New York, um, it just gives you good practical advice about, you know, customer service and how to project yourself and how to be professional and to show up early and to thank your guests, you know, kind of basic stuff, but it's, it's, it's a really good reference. This is a, an example of the table of contents of that book. You can get it on Amazon. It's about $30. Um, microphones and PA systems at the bottom there, you see, that's something that's up to the individual guide. If you think whether or not, whether or not you can project on, a, on the street, depends on how many people you have. It depends. Let me tell you, if you're going to be a guide in New York City, you are going to run into traffic. <laughs> There's just no way about it. Um, or ambulances or fire engines or whatever. So uh, and it's a personal preference. I personally do not like using the amplifier, but sometimes I do. If I'm doing something on a Saturday afternoon in the East Village, I'll use the, because uh, Saturday afternoon is particularly uh, a lot of traffic. So what do you want to do tours of? And I alluded to the fact that, uh, so how did I get started doing this? Well, during the pandemic, there were no tours and Gannick has meetings every month. And one of the people who runs the education committee of Gannick said, you know, if there's something you know something about, try writing a tour about that particular thing. And I happen to have friends who were part of the music scene back in the 70s. And I was a big music fan myself. So I said, well, maybe I could write a tour about, you know, the Fillmore and CBGBs and the bottom line. And that's what I did. And that's like kind of my primary tour, actually, that I do like once a month. And um this is a photograph of the of the Gannick tour guides. I gave them all a tour back in, uh, this is about two or three years ago. But so do you want to do something like that? Do you want to do local neighborhoods? Do you want to do your neighborhood? Um, do you want to do uh, highlights? Highlights of New York. That's a big one. You know, a lot of people, Times Square, Central Park, Empire State Building, Rockville Center, downtown, 9-11. A lot of people, that's what they put in their list. There are Facebook groups for people who are coming to New York. And I'll just be honest, they all ask the exact same questions which, uh, without um, going through and reading the group. <laughs> the big question is how do I get from JFK to Times Square? Like that's everybody asked that question. Um, it's kind of funny in a way we have a, a joke about that. Like, did they ask about getting from, J whatever. Any case, you can also do bus tours and the bus tours would be, you could do them locally or what's called over the road, which means like you would take a group from New York to say Washington or Boston or Philadelphia. And that um, obviously requires a lot more time commitment and um, knowledge of the other cities uh, because you, you would be the guide there or they might hire a guide there, but you would be working for an operator. So we're gonna talk about the companies one can work for as well. So what kind of tour do you wanna do? Well, this is an example. This is my friend, Dave Gardner, who was actually the one who kind of coached me and encouraged me uh, and introduced me to the folks who run my uh, the East Village tour that I do uh, to do. He does a Titanic tour. There is nothing that he does not know about the Titanic. <laughs> he does a tour starting in Astor Place about uh, the sinking of the Titanic. And it ends over at uh, what now little little pier, because that's the that is the pier that the Titanic survivors came from. But the reason he starts at Astor Place is because John Jacob Astor died on the Titanic. And so he, he mentions different people uh, related to the Titanic and he goes through the village mostly, he goes stops at St. Vincent's Hospital with where a lot of the survivors were. He, there's a hotel on um, West Street that he goes to. 
and uh, it's about two and a half hours, and it's really a fun, fun tour. He's really, really fun. So, so do you want to do walking tours? Do you want to do theme tours? Like I, I kind of specialize in music tours, but I have friends who specialize in subway tours. Do you want to do story tours, like uh, like my friend doing the Titanic, or I have another friend who does the Nazis on the Upper East Side. Believe it or not, he <laughs> he's been doing a virtual tour of that for. A couple of years now, we started doing it in person. Uh, I actually live on the Upper East Side, around the corner from uh, some of the places where these folks used to um, used to hang out. You want to do a history tour? I have a friend who wrote a tour on U.S. presidents by bicycle. You know, starting with George Washington at Federal Hall, going up to Cooper Union. Uh, do you want to do the Revolutionary War in New York? That's a big topic, especially because of Hamilton. Everybody is interested in a little bit about the the Revolution. Or do you want to do food tours? Do you want to do Little Italy? There's, a, there's a, a guy who started a thing called Bagel Fest, which is just nothing but bagels. And pizza. Everybody's interested in pizza. They want to come to New York and have pizza. I can tell you that almost every tourist says, where's the best pizza? And we all know that most pizza in New York is pretty good. There are some exceptions, but most of it's pretty good. So how do you write a tour? How, how does it start? Well. It's very much like researching any topic. If you were writing a paper for college or, or uh, for, for school, it requires you know research, books, videos, articles, sources. So you pick the theme. And like, for instance, when I did my East Village tour, I knew where the Fillmore was. I knew a little bit about the Fillmore, but I didn't really know the stories of the Fillmore because I was too young when the Fillmore was working, was operational. So I had to do a lot of research on that. And I bought a couple of books and talked to a couple people and joined a couple of Facebook groups. And um, that's sort of how I created the whole story about um, the Fillmore and the Who getting arrested because of the fire next door. It's a, one of my favorite stories to tell. So you pick a theme. Uh, a recent tour that I put together, the theme is come to Greenwich Village, bring your guitar, make the right connections, and you can become world famous. So you have to plan out your route, right? You come up with the idea, like in my case, I said Fillmore, CBGB's, bottom line. But there's a bunch of places in between there that I also uh, talk about. The average tour should have between 10 and 15 stops, depending on who your audience is going to be. Approximately two to five minutes per stop uh, of talking. And a good way to organize yourself when you're doing this is to create a spreadsheet of each stop and who are the characters involved. Like in my case, at the Fillmore, we talk about Bill Graham and we talk about Led Zeppelin and we talk about Jimi Hendrix and we talk about The Who and um, the folks that worked at the Fillmore who then went on to run Woodstock. So you talk about the characters and what's the story you're going to tell about those people. It's good to have a friend to come along with you to kind of, if you have a large group to bring up the rear because sometimes you lose you can lose people. Um, like if you're, if you're walking, um, going from place to place, if possible, um, and you should always cross at the corners and the green lights. Uh, I had somebody sort of scold me for that on one of the tours I did. And I was like, okay, I learned a lesson. Don't ever not do that again. And also, so at the beginning of your tour, you should always tell your guests what the logistics are. Uh, in other words, how long the tour is going to go, what you're going to cover and when you're going to be able to go to the bathroom. That's an important thing. If you're doing a two-hour tour, it's good to make sure that you uh, that you put in it towards the middle uh, a bathroom stop, and then summer at the end, you, you know, you summarize and you say thank you, you know, hope you enjoyed yourself and thank your guests for coming. So here's an example of a tour that I just put together last night, uh, just as an example. This is how you would map it out. So I said to myself. Okay, if I wanted, if people came to me and said they wanted a Revolutionary War tour of Park Slope, Brooklyn, where would I, where would I start and where would I go? Because I know a little bit about that. I'm not an expert in this, but I happen to grow up in Park Slope, so I sort of know the neighborhood pretty well. It's a, so the Park Slope, a little bit about Park Slope history and Revolutionary War. So I would start at 7th Street, 7th Avenue and 9th Street, because that's where the, the F train leads, uh, leaves you off. It's the, it's the most popular stop in the neighborhood. Then we can walk up 9th Street to the Lafayette Memorial, which is the entrance to Prospect Park at 9th Street, uh, down Prospect Park West to the Litchfield, Litchfield Villa, which is the headquarters for the Parks Department, but is also the mansion for Mr. Litchfield, who's the guy who designed Park Slope, 
and um, it's a beautiful building. I don't know if you can get into it, but any case, so that's, uh, that would be a stop. And then we could walk through the park. We could go to the picnic house where there are open bathrooms, then over to Battle Pass, which is over near the zoo. And that's where there was um, one of the parts of the Battle of Brooklyn or the Battle of Long Island happened uh, right there. And then we can go down and go back down and go down Third Street, which if you know anything about Park Slope, Third Street is one of the most beautiful blocks in the neighborhood, to the old stone house, which has, a, has an exhibit about the Marylanders who fought against uh, the British and helped George Washington to be able to cross the Gowanus Creek and then get his people across um, lower Manhattan into Manhattan and up through Harlem Heights and over to uh, New Jersey and eventually to uh, Prospect to uh, Fort Valley Forge. So just an example of how you can lay out a tour. I could add a few more stops in here if I wanted to, but this is just an example. All right. So you have to be clear about your logistics. When you say meet me, you have to be specific. So start. I'm starting at 11 o'clock at 51 West 52nd Street on the northeast corner of 6th Avenue. Now, a tourist might not know what a northeast corner is, but a New Yorker would probably know. But just be very spe as specific as possible because people can just get lost. It's just how it goes. The max for a walking tour, I'd say, is about two hours because both the tour guide and the guests kind of start tuning out at like an hour and a half um, and trying to stay focused. So um, that's planned to do about two hours. And that's about a mile and a half, depending on the neighborhood, depending on if you're going uphill or downhill or what have you. To microphone or not to microphone, again, it depends on the number of people in the area you're going to cover. And do you want to do a volunteer tour? Do you want to do like a, a tour for the Municipal Art Society? Or do you want to do something for a company that's going to pay you? Um, although I do believe the Municipal Art Society pays you something. I'm not sure exactly what. But there's also an organization, which I don't really talk about in this presentation here, called Free Tours by Foot, where they do tours of New York, but they also, uh, the, the only way the tour guide gets remun remunerated is by tips. So I'm just, I'm not a fan, but any case. So what are the benefits of being a tour guide? Why would you want to do this? Well, you're sharing something you're passionate about, in my case, music. Um, you're helping people to understand the history and the dynamics of our city. You're educating your neighbors. You're welcoming newcomers to New York. Uh, the, peop the, the people you meet, I'll just tell you this, every tour guide you meet in New York is a real New York nerd. And there's no question about New York that you cannot get answered by one of the tour guide, one of the people who was a tour guide. I'll give you an example. So we went to Katz's for dinner. And on the wall at Katz's, there was a phone number. Uh, it, it was a picture of Franklin Roosevelt. And I forget what it was an advertisement for, but the phone number underneath it was dry dock to something, something, something. And it was in the East Village. And I said, dry dock in the East Village? So you remember how the, the, there used to be exchanges, right? Circle six and Sterling eight, et cetera, for all the phones in New York. So I posted in the group and I said, why would they say dry dock uh, about the East Village? And apparently back in the 1850s and 60s, the East Village was where the dry docks were for the boats that would come to New York and need, needed to be repaired. So now there's the dry dock playground over uh, by the FDR, but you know, that's an example of the kind of thing I never knew, but somebody in the group did. And um, being part of GANIC, we will sometimes get free free entrance to attractions because they want us to know what the attraction has. So examples are like uh, Top of the Rock or Empire State Building uh, or the Summit. Those, those places in particular want the guides to be aware of uh, what they offer. Uh, you learn more about the city. And sometimes you can get discounts overseas. Like if you go to Italy, for instance, you can show them your uh, guides, guide badge that you have. And sometimes you'll get discounts when you go to something like uh, Vesuvius or the Colosseum. Um, so who are, who are the organizations in New York that offer tours? Well, thank you, Historic Districts Council. They do a wonderful job of educating people about neighborhoods and the history of neighborhoods and the importance of preservation. Uh, Municipal Art Society does a similar thing, and they have 
in the spring, a thing called Jane's Walk based on the work that Jane Jacobs did. Um, and those are very popular. I've done a few, I've taken a few of the Jane's Walks. I've never given one. Bowery Boys Walks is very popular. Bowery Boys are uh, two gentlemen who do a podcast all in New York City history, and it's really entertaining. The New York Adventure Club is the group that I do most of my uh, tours through. And then there's another one called Untap New York. And they do things like Grand Central and they're sort of more um, mainline uh, sort of things that could be either of interest to a tourist or a New Yorker. But I would say New York Adventure Club is more geared towards people just curious about different things in New York. So we're, we'll talk about um, some of the different kinds of tours that they offer. All right. So here's an example of HDC. You, you have your uh, conference coming up, and these are some of the tours that were that are on the website. You could take a tour of East Harlem community murals, mosaics, and other uh, public art uh, with Marina Ortiz. So Harlem tours are very popular. I can I can tell you that. Um, it, also, you could see the sig significance of the African burial ground national national monument downtown, uh, right north of City Hall. Uh, on HTC's website. Here's the MAS website. So these are the kinds of tours they offer. Uh, Red Hook in Brooklyn, uh, Art Deco from Murray Hill to Gramercy Park. That's when sold out because, you know, popular neighborhood. Uh, Gramercy Park, one, two, uh, I'm sorry, Grand Central, <laughs> one, two, three, with an MAS docent named Judy Garza. So um, different options. Now here's Bowery Boys. Uh, this is a little bit from Bowery Boys website. They are very popular and they tend to sort of be almost exclusively historic, historic stuff, not like stuff that's going on today. Uh, but my friend Emma does the, uh, she does the Gilded Age Mansions of Fifth Avenue tour for them. And she wrote that tour on her own. She researched it uh, and she put together this tour. It's very popular. Everybody is doing Gilded Age tours now. So here's Emma, she's the one with the bag, uh, doing, um, doing her tour for a private group. So because she's got it done, this private group hired her uh, to do it. And here's the highlights. She, she talks about the Frick collection. So she goes to the Frick Museum, uh, the James B. Duke House, today NYU Fine Arts. That's on Fifth Avenue, I believe that's, I'm not sure exactly where that is, but it's on Fifth Avenue. I think that's the one at 82nd Street. I live on 82nd Street. I think that's the one up there. The Payne Whitney House the home of Otto Kahn, uh, most famous Bon Vivant, the inspiration for Miss Monopoly, uh, the Sin Henry F. Sinclair House, and the Cooper Hewitt National Design Museum, which, as I said earlier, was the former home of Car Andrew Carnegie. And just a little note about that particular block. Across the street from there, uh, across the street from the Hew Cooper Hewitt Museum, there was a mansion that was, two mansions that were built for the Vanderbilt sisters. And the son of one of the Vanderbilt sisters is a guy named um, John Hammond. And I just wrote a tour about John Hammond and Bruce Springsteen and Bob Dylan because John Hammond, because he had a trust fund, he worked in music. He worked on uh, for Columbia Records. And he's the one who put Bob Dylan and Bruce Springsteen on the map. But is because he, you know, he was wealthy because he was a Vanderbilt. Here's a New York Adventure Club uh, website just showing you the, the, the kinds of tours that they offer. And again, that's the tour that I just did last weekend, exploring Greenwich Village musical history. And there at the bottom is my friend Dave Gardner's um, Titanic tour. Here's Untapped and their version of the Gilded Age mansions. You could talk a lot about the Fifth Avenue and the Gilded Age because that, that mansion you're looking there in that picture, that is the corner of 58th Street and Fifth Avenue. And that was a Vanderbilt mansion. It was only there for a short period of time. Uh, and then it was torn down and they built uh, Bergdorf Goodman's in that spot. And then the Plaza Hotel across the street. So um, do you wanna do a virtual tour or do you wanna do a walking tour? Uh, because there's pros and cons to both. With a virtual tour, as I said, my friend uh, Robert Brenner does did this Nazi uh, of Nazis of the Upper East Side walking uh, virtual tour, and the audience is potentially much larger because you're not limiting yourself to geography and the number of people that you're capable of walking around New York City. 
A virtual tour can be recorded and watched repeatedly as we're doing tonight. It's gonna to go on YouTube. Uh, you're, not ge you're not geographically limited, so you don't have to be just, you know, a mile and a half in the, in the village. You could do the entire village or you could do an entire neighborhood. Uh, it requires technology knowledge. If you, if you don't understand how PowerPoint and Zoom and all those things work, it's a little bit more difficult. Uh, when you're doing a virtual tour, you have many things going on at once. If you're, if you're the, the one speaking, because you have the screen, you might have your notes, you might have chat that you have to respond to. So it's just a little bit more um, kind of to keep track of. Uh, and then you can't just take a photograph and use it. You have to license it or get permission somehow to license it. So um, that's a sticking point for a lot of people on the virtual tour. But I have a friend who does a virtual tour of the Woolworth building. And he was he became the guide at the Woolworth building. And the tour was fabulous. It's absolutely fabulous. and. Uh, he had been doing it in person and then when the pandemic happened they offered to him to do it virtually and it was it was a big 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 hit so uh, companies that i know of that offer virtual tours as i said historic districts council thank you very much and new york adventure club has a whole bunch of uh virtual tours they actually do virtual tours of england too parts of uh, english history they they branched out uh so let's talk a little bit about the organizations that uh, you can become part of that can help you in your tour guide career. So I am a member of GANIC, uh, the Guides Association of New York. I'm actually on the board of GANIC because I said to myself, how am I going to learn this business? Well, if I get on the board, I might actually learn something from these people <laughs> by osmosis. So I, uh, I joined the board. And uh, I'm one of those people that likes to you know join and help out and stuff. So I did, and it's 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 been really really fun, really good to understand behind the scenes. Because I said I'm a, I'm an IT person. I know computers. Another one is the World Federation of Tourist Guide Associations. So that's global, the International Association of Tour Guide Tour Directors and Guides, and the National Federation um, of Tour Guide Associations. So these are, and they, all of these, the three on the bottom, they all host conferences that you can attend where you could network if you wanted to. The bottom line with, gu with guiding is it's all about networking. It's all about getting to know the other guides. And, uh, you know, like for instance, you know, I, there's certain topics I don't know anything about, but there are guides who do. And I can, I can ask them to come in. Hey, do you want to do a Broadway tour? I don't really know the Broadway uh, thing. They might ask me to do a, uh, a nice village tour. So this is Gannick's website. And one of the benefits, so we have there in the blue shirt there next to the pole, that's Joe Shvelak, who has been doing tours for HTC for years. And he was, he's one of their top guides. Um, he has had some health issues uh, recently, so he's not doing tours at the moment, but he's, he was my first tour guide friend. Uh, there was a networking party that they had and he came up and started chatting with me. And uh, I took his Dutch New York tour, Lower Manhattan. It was That was the first Gannick event. I went to the, the first tour, FAM tour. Um, and it was wonderful. And he knows Brooklyn like nobody's business. He just really knows it well. But okay, so Gannick is an organization of uh, tour guides and they do what's called FAM tours. So I do, when you come up with a new tour, you can do a FAM tour and you basically have the other guides come along with you and you get to iron out your kinks. But they also have, you know, networking events and we, and they have monthly meetings, which are really fun. And you don't have to be a member of GANIC to go to the monthly meeting. And the monthly meeting usually has a speaker about a particular topic um, and, uh, you know, some educational element to it. For instance, uh, the gentleman, who, uh, Eric K. Washington, if you've heard of him, he's he's the one responsible for that. If you've heard about this uh, building, that school, the the it's called the Colored School on 17th Street. It's one of the last historic remnants of um, the colored education, African-American education that happened a um, hundred years ago. And he is responsible for getting that building uh, landmark. And he has done phenomenal research. And he's one, he was one of our speakers at one of our meetings that we had at the Jefferson Market a few, um, few months ago. Phenomenal work that he did. And this is the website for the WFTGA. I have never actually gone to any of these conferences. I'm just telling you about them because I know my, I've heard my other guide friends talk about them and say they're really wonderful. So you could network with people from all over the world at this one. 
Um, and here's another one that's another international group. And you see down there, Contiki. Contiki is a student organization that does tours in uh, Europe. Hold on, somebody's just joining. And here is my friend Jackie Spencer, who is a top Beatles tour guide in Liverpool, doing a tour for Contiki. You see the bus in the background there. And those two buildings there, if you've never been to Liverpool, the one on the right is the Customs House, and the one on the left is Cunard. It's the Cunard, the, the old Cunard building where you would buy your ticket if you were taking a Cunard ship. Now, if you're familiar with Lower Manhattan, you would know that we also have a customs house and a Cunard building. And uh, that Cunard building now hosts uh, a museum of uh, British music, like um, British invasion music. Well, actually the whole gamut of British music, but this is um, just an example of some kind of thing you could do. And the NFTGA, which is the National Federation of Tour Guide uh, Associations. So who are the, and we're all, almost done. We have another like five, five, 10 minutes to go. Uh, who are the big, big guys in, tour, in the uh, tour guiding? Well, the most important one here is TripAdvisor slash Viator because Europeans look at TripAdvisor. They look at your ranking. And as a tour guide, you want to get ranking with uh, rankings on TripAdvisor. TripAdvisor is partnered with Viator. So you have to, if you want to have a page on TripAdvisor, you have to put your tours on Viator. And then there's Tours by Locals, which I also work for, and Get Your Guide, which I'm, I, I haven't worked for yet. Um, but both of those organizations take about 25% of whatever you charge for the tour. So just bear that in mind. But, you know, I look at it that um, it's a marketing, it's a cost of marketing. So here's an example. You see here, this is my uh, East Village tour on TripAdvisor. And I have there at the bottom on the on the left seven reviews that have been done for me of people uh on that tour so it's just really important trip advisors kind of like foundational to uh to being a tour guide so here's here's just a a, a, a screenshot from via tour and just an example of when i have my tours i have to put them in this format for them and they have like a website that you go through where you you know give a description they all basically ask the same thing when are you going to start when are you going to stop who are your target audience um you know what's the benefit people are going to get out of it you know your basic description of the tour and here's tours by locals and they are global um global organization and they're a little bit more specialized like I just find them a little bit easier to work with um, because actually there's people you can talk to. Viator is kind of like, you know, there's somebody somewhere, but I, there's not an in individual. And here's an example of tours by locals in New York. And um, the two top guides there, the, the guy in red and the guy with the purple um, and the woman underneath uh, the guy with the purple are all members of Gannick. That's uh, Adam Guy and Jeremy Wilcox and Maggie Brown, who's the one who got me connected to Tours by Locals. And um, this is a good one. I, I, re I really like working with them. I have a tour coming up with a couple coming from New Zealand who want to do a highlights of New York. So I'm going to take them around and show them the sites. So when you, when you decide to be a tour guide, you have to think about, um, do you want to do it? Do you want to work for somebody else? Because there's companies you can work for. Or do you want to just do individual on your own? And when, you, when it comes to doing things on your own, the hardest thing is marketing and getting customers because you have to be an expert in search engine optimization <laughs> and you have to get, just get the word out there. But it's, it's a really important thing to have a website, at least. I have not gotten any business through my website, to be honest, but it's, it's like a reference point. Um, so that people kind of know who can, can find me and know who I am. And this is my website. It's not very uh, advanced, but it's, it's, it's good. And it's, I basically have up there the, the private tour, the East Village tour, the media moguls. I haven't added the other one, the different tours that I have. And this artwork here, I created through what's called Canva, which is an uh, online kind of artwork thing. That's an, that's an uh, open source open stock picture that I'm using there. So it's good to have a brand. And my name of my company is Jumpstart NYC because I wanted, to, my, my original idea was I wanted people to be able to come to New York and be able to navigate. 
uh, because I would see all these people standing in front of the Metro card machine with like deer in the headlight, not knowing what to do. And I'm like, these people just need to know how to use the subway. So that's my, that was my original idea when I first started doing this. And now I actually have tours kind of with that theme. But it can be as simple as just having a business card and a simple idea and uh, just letting your friends know or doing something for HTC in a particular neighborhood that you're interested in highlighting. Hey, did you know about uh, this row of houses in, in Sunset Park or Bushwick or you know Jackson Heights or what have you? And the story that goes, goes behind it. Um, it's up to you how to, how to design this. It's, it's an entrepreneurial kind of, uh, kind of thing, but it's, it's fun. You're not alone because there are other tour guides out there to, uh, to sort of help guide you. <laughs> to use a word. So that's it. This was my fam tour that I did, familiarization tour that I did a couple of weeks ago for the new tour that I did. And that picture is taken on Jones Street, Jones and Fourth Street, uh, which is the famous corner where Bob Dylan took the picture of his Free Wheelin album, which was his second album um, with him and his girlfriend, Suze Rotolo. Uh, and that is it. So as my dad from the west side of Manhattan, and if you have any questions, I'm happy to, happy to try to answer them if I can. There you go. 10 minutes Thanks. to spare, Michelle. <laughs> that was great. Thank you. I think we have some questions in the chat. Let me see. Um, Linda wants to know, how do you become a tour guide for historic properties only? Um, well, number one, you need a license to be able to be a tour guide. And you can just, you just focus yourself on historic on historic properties. You just say, this is my specialty. This is what I want to do. There's no specific, like I want to be a tour guide for this particular topic. It's just a general license overall. And then you just, um, you just find, find what focus you want to have. Uh, we have one, is there a study guide, which you kind of covered, um, but are there like practice tests that you can take before you take the actual, um, guide Unfortunately, test? Fortunately, no, <laughs> there aren't. But if you Google around, you might find examples of questions. But I'll tell you this, the way they write the questions is pretty, they want you to pass. They, you know, they, they almost, some of them have like a paragraph about Rockville Center, and then they ask a question afterwards. And if you read the paragraph correctly, you'll see that the answer is in the paragraph. So it's really not that hard. Um, but I would, okay. I would recommend, um, as I said, looking at Jesse, Jesse on a journey's, uh, blog, um, and then just Googling because other people have, you know, written copies of the questions online. So you get an, get an idea. Um, someone would like to know, do you need a license if you give free tours only? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. You need a license if the free tours by foot guides are all, uh, licensed. Um, someone asked if I will be um, sharing the presentation. The this is being recorded, so you can um, come back to the the video. Um, I will send out a link to this recording to everyone probably tomorrow, um, and then it will be available on our YouTube channel um, along with all of our other preservation schools and also on our website. Great. Do we have any other questions? Uh, in the chat here. Uh, okay. Just say thank you. Put a copy of the guide. I'm not special study. Um, somebody's asking if that book, it's the book that I uh, recommended. Um, that is just a gen general tour guide book, but it's not specific to New York. So if you want to pass the New York test, just. Um, you know, I honestly, I think it would be, I would think if you're somebody who loves New York, you could pass the test. It's worth it to take the test just to kind of know what's on the test. And, and if you don't pass, just take it again, because then you'll know what's on the test. Um, it's, it's not, it's not that hard. It's, it's, it's kind of fun. It's like going to like a trivia night with your friends, only you're by yourself in front of a computer. <laughs> <laughs> How long generally, like does it take you to develop a tour? You know, you were saying 
a lot of times it's something that you have a base knowledge in. So let's assume you have some base knowledge, but you still have to do additional research and, you know, put together the sites. How long does it take you? Um, that depends. I would say, I would say I put in at least 30 or 40 hours, a good week's worth of work. Okay. You know, not, not all at once, but, you know, buy a book, read it on the subway, take notes. Uh, oh, I want to talk about that. Uh, yeah. Like when I did the Bob Dylan tour, um, I, I'm not a, actually quite honestly, not a, a big Dylan fan. I'm not that I'm not a fan, but I just, he wasn't one of the people I followed. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and I needed to learn about his, I knew that he lived in Greenwich village and I knew that he was part of the scene, but I didn't really know the details. So I bought three or four books and let me tell you, there's a lot of books out there about Bob Dylan <laughs> and I read the books and that one took me that, that one was, took a lot, a lot of work because I just, I had, I was kind of starting from scratch, but I was interested in the topic and there was a lot of source material. So okay. I'd, I'd say at least, um, at least, a, you know, like between reading and just kind of sorting through it a, a good 20, 30 hours. To, to kind of feel solid about it. Do you put together a whole script for yourself or just like bullet points? Uh, bullet points. I do bullet okay. points uh, because, uh, you know, generally I've done the research and I can, I know the topic behind the scenes. But what I do is I, I do PowerPoint. I do a PowerPoint presentation with, you know, whatever photographs or what have you. And then I do PowerPoint with like words on it like as if you were sitting in a presentation like we're doing here so that I had that as my script. Don't forget to mention that the Grateful Dead played at Cafe A Go Go 10 times, you know, in, 19, in 1967, like that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so that there were words on the page that kind of, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's talk about that. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Anybody else? Any questions? Let's see if there's any other. How do people put together a bus tour? Hmm, that's a good question, actually. Um, so as part of the GANIC certification class that we all took, uh, we did like a mock bus tour. And they basically took us around like, you know, 6th Avenue and 5th Avenue. And, you know, you had to just talk about, well, here we are going up 6th Avenue and there's Radio City and there's uh, the Exxon building or what have you. Um, bus is a little bit harder because you don't have as much control. It just requires a general knowledge of New York and, you know, what the highlights are going to be. Like, if you know that you're going to be going through Times Square, you have a little spiel about Times Square. Uh, if you know that you're going to be going down Fifth Avenue, say, uh, you know, there's a lot to talk about on Fifth Avenue, right? But the, as the bus moves along, then you're like, uh, wait, I want to talk about the Vanderbilts, but now we're at 47th Street and they were at 50th Street, you know? So um, I don't think it's quite as easy to do the um, the bus just from a flow standpoint, but it's just, just general New York knowledge. You know, here we are on Fifth Avenue. This is the dividing line for Manhattan. On the one side, we have the West and on the other side, we have the East. And that's how, you know, that kind of uh, general knowledge. Not You're not going to tell them an entire story about, you know, how St. Patrick's Cathedral was built. You could just say, you could just mention St. Patrick's Cathedral, 1873 or what have you. I hope I answered that question. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Have you or a tour group ever faced any sort of hostility or harassment? Oh, that's that's a not, uh, that's a good question. Um, hmm. Yes, I have actually. <laughs> um, they included, say, a panhandler. A panhandler. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, and I generally just sort of say, "Oh, thank you so much, but we're not interested," or try to move, and then try to move the group along. Like, for instance, if you're like over on the Bowery near CBGB's, um, you know, I'll take them around the corner to get away because there's the men's shelter actually right around the corner from CBGB's. Um, uh, so yeah, I just try to move them along and be, you know, be as polite as possible. Um, it's, it's a little bit dicey at times, but I, I like to do my tours early in the morning now because it's less, Okay, so I'll give you an example. Last week I was doing the Bob Dylan thing and we were on uh, McDougal Street. 
and McDougal has become marijuana headquarters. <laughs> I'll just tell you, it's just, and there were a bunch of people who were kind of like coming over and kind of harassing us. And I'm like, what are we going to do? So I walked them around the corner and we went to Manette, Manette Lane and I did my spiel from there just to get away from it. But McDougal's really important in that story because that's where the Gaslight Cafe was. And that's where both Bob and Bruce started their careers. One of the places anyway. So um, yeah, it's, you know, you got to do your New York thing and just sort of put your head down and just kind of move along. Yeah. Yeah, it does seem like an unfortunate occupational hazard. Yeah, it, it, yeah. And also just the, you know, the street noise and, and that heat. You know, it's yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Always make sure you tell your guests to bring water as well. Oh, uh, well, this was great. It was very informative. Thank you. That was actually very thorough. Good, um, good, good. Oh, hold on. Great. I think we have one more. In regards to the bus tour, do you need a special license? I imagine you join a company. Yes. Um, you, uh, no, you don't need a special license to be a bus. Uh, uh, if you're running a company and you want, you want, you want to bring like eight or 10 people on a bus, then you need a license, but to just do tours on a bus, the, the tour guide license works. However, let me just say one of the things that Gannick is trying to do is there's a bill in the city council, uh, because what happened was during the pandemic, the bus companies got rid of all the guides on the buses. And we want there to be a guide because a guide on the bus for the safety of the passengers, because the operator, the guy who's driving the bus is the one responsible for, for everything for running. Like all these buses now have recorded, uh, recorded information, like the, all those double decker buses you see all over the place. And that's just kind of, you know, you're coming to New York, you're spending 60, $75, whatever it costs for one of those hop on hop off things. And you're getting a recording when you could get a live guide who could tell you about Broadway, about Fifth Avenue, about the Woolworth building, about, you know, St. Paul's and what have you. Um, so, yeah, it's um, it's something we're, we're, we're trying to lobby. I don't actually I don't remember the number of the bill of top top of our head, but Gail Brewer is supporting us, which we're very happy about. Uh, okay, is there any sort of legal, fiscal liability, being a tour guide, any personal property damage, et cetera? Okay, so I'll just tell you that one of the main benefits of GANIC is that they have a group liability insurance policy. And a lot of people join GANIC just for that. It's, it's $125 for the dues, and it's $99 for the uh, insurance. Um, so yeah, you have to have some kind of insurance because you know somebody trips on the sidewalk or or um, hurts themselves. You don't want them to come after you for that. Uh, that's why I steer away from bicycle tours and things like that because I could I could certainly do a bicycle tour, um, but I, it's just too scary to me if somebody you know hurt themselves while they were on the Manhattan Bridge with me on a bicycle. Um, yeah, that wouldn't be fun. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Um, okay, it is seven o'clock, so I think we are done. Uh, but yes, thank you again very much. Um, as I mentioned, this has been recorded. It will be on our YouTube channel. Um, also, as you delightfully included, we have all of our tours for our conference coming up. We also have a Crow Hill tour um, partnering with MAS this coming Saturday. All the info is on our website, hdc.org. And also, you mentioned Eric K. Washington. Uh, we are actually honoring him this year at our Grassroots Preservation Awards for getting the school designated. Uh, that will be on June 13th. Yes, June 13th. Um, so again, hdc.org. If anyone is not on our mailing list, I'm sure you all are. But if not, please do sign up. Or again, you can contact me, m-a-r-b-u-l-u at hdc.org. And I hope to see you guys at future preservation schools. And thank you very much. Good night. Thank you for the opportunity, Michelle.